Hello everyone, welcome to this edition of Menopause Conversations. I'm really pleased to welcome my guest today, Allegra Foxley. Hello Allegra, how are you? Hello, how are you doing? Yeah, great, thank you. So let me introduce you to Allegra. I met Allegra um, via LinkedIn. LinkedIn is fantastic for meeting people. And if you don't connect with people and have a conversation, I would encourage you to do so because magical things happen. So today we're going to talk about the work that Allegra does. Allegra is the is a founder of the Foxy Plan. Um, she's qualified as attention and exercise release provider. So let's find out more about that because that sounds hugely interesting. But what we're going to do today is we're going to actually bring the work that Allegra does and we're going to talk about it in the context of menopause and perimenopause. So welcome Allegra. It's lovely to have you here today. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about what you do. Uh, you know, if you can give us a potted summary of how you arrived here, then that, that would be brilliant. So, so how is it you do what you do? So I help women reset their nervous system, which has a really positive impact on their endocrine system and emotions. Um, so I arrived here because... I, um, I suffered with really bad post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, I'm a qualified yoga and Pilates instructor and you know all sorts of different stuff like that, but I was still really suffering with PTSD. Um, discovered tension and trauma releasing exercises, which have been a game changer for my physical, um, mental and emotional health. So, during my kind of quest to heal and to, to help me recover, um, I noticed very positive, significant changes to do with my female hormones and my menstrual cycle and my mood. Um, I've done a lot of research on this. I've written a book, um, which will be released in September. And my whole kind of aim is to help women reclaim their you, you know, reclaim the old you that you were. Now, post-traumatic stress disorder is a disorder that dysregulates your nervous system. And do you know what? Guess what? So does perimenopause and menopause. So estrogen um, is a nerve protector. OK, so once we hit peri and estrogen decreases, it leaves our nervous system at more risk of inflammation, which can cause all sorts of horrible symptoms to be quite frank now at the same time progesterone decreases which kind of protects us from cortisol so our cortisol which is the stress hormone increases to the highest it will be um, if a woman has not had any kind of traumatic incidents in her life now cortisol dysregulates the nervous system so it's kind of like a, a double whammy of kind of negativity for our nervous system. And when our nervous system's dysregulated, it means that we're more likely to suffer with unmanageable mood swings because we're gonna be in our survival kind of um, response, which is fight, flight, freeze, and appease. So, if we're if our nervous system's in a fight response, we're going to be we're going to feel angry. You know, maybe we're angry with our loved one or with our family or with our colleague. We're just really more irritable. OK, if we're in a flight mode, we might be more anxious, um, might suffer with real kind of imposter syndrome, but we're overwhelmed. So we've got that sympathetic arousal there. If we're in a freeze response, um, we could feel really disconnected from our body. We could feel numb. We could just feel not ourselves, completely out of kilter. When we've got a dysregulated nervous system, we can suffer with problems like insomnia, waking up at 3 a.m. in the morning, which is often one of the first kind of symptoms that women will notice when they go into perimenopause. Um, so there's all sorts of different symptoms there. Um, and these symptoms are really similar to post-traumatic stress disorder. So I'm 44, I'm in perimenopause. Um, I noticed there was a huge difference to my menstrual cycle and to my premenstrual tension um, on the run-up to my bleed. Um, 
Well, that's due to a, co a combination of different things, really, because PTSD dysregulates your nervous system. There's studies out there to say that women who suffer with PTSD are eight times more likely to suffer with PMDD, um, which is premenstrual dysphoric disorder, um, which is absolutely fascinating. So the, the, there's lots of questions about it. PMDD, many women actually have epigenetic changes. Um, at a cellular level, um, epigenetics is complicated, and that's a different um, kind of it's a different interview. But these are all factors. Now, the exercises that I teach and that I formulated um, reset your nervous system, and they get rid of a whole host of um, unmanageable symptoms, making you feel more connected to your body, um, and making you feel happy making you sleep and um, they're great also for alleviating autoimmune kind of uh, some of the autoimmune disorders that many women in their 40s and 50s seem to develop um, there's quite a big correlation link between stress ptsd and autoimmune kind of disorders and all sorts of different things like that but um yeah i've talked too much but that's the general thing i help women reset their nervous systems so that they feel great that's amazing and so can i ask just a, a few questions so i think there can be a generalization that ptsd has to be a big event i mean can you quantify or clarify you know what constitutes ptsd yeah, I mean, that's a brilliant question and you're absolutely right. So many people said to me, for example, well, you've not been to war, you've not been to Kabul, um, you've not been in a car crash, you can't have PTSD. Uh -uh, totally wrong. So you can get it from accumulative stress, um, being overwhelmed, you could get it from your job, you could get it from a divorce, um, you could get it from having an operation as a child. That's quite a common thing. Sometimes the anesthesia doesn't um, work correctly. And, you know, I've had clients who've been awake during the operation, but haven't been able to communicate. So that's that's a thing. It happens. Um, I've had a client who, and this is quite horrible, but she was involved in it. Her mum had an accident and she was born off the back of the accident she, whilst, whilst she was unaware that she struggled with it and she had anxiety and all sorts of problems all throughout her life she um, her nervous system wasn't so the body remembers every single thing that you've kind of been through so it can be all sorts of different things you can get collective trauma so covid's collective trauma isn't it yeah I've got transgenerational trauma so very common for like um it's common in a lot of families transgenerational trauma maybe your dad hit you and then you know you might go on to do the same with your child you know it happens sadly more often than not it's cyclical um and then you've got um trauma like that gets carried on through for example like people who are in the holocaust you know mm. so there's all sorts of different trauma all amount to your brain thinking we need to run away from a tiger even though there's no tiger in there's no tiger in Chester where I am, apart from the zoo. Um, but but my brain obviously thought that there was a tiger, and was and, and was causing all sorts of, of problems. So if we think about our brain as an inner guard dog, right? So we could just be walking along the street or whatever, thinking, you know, I don't know, what should I have for lunch? Our brain's not thinking that. Our brain is like a computer um, with RAM checking everything in the background. You've got the antiviral software, you've got everything and um, formulating stuff at a subconscious level. Um, and that's your fight or flight. Now, I send neurogenic tremors around the nervous system. And what they do is they switch off. It's kind of like having a system reset for your nervous mm. system. So they switch off your survival response, taking you into um, rest and digest. Now, if you've ever watched a David Attenborough film and 
you might have seen a gazelle, a gazelle being chased by a lion. The gazelle legs it, and then only when the gazelle thinks that they are in inescapable danger, um, they're going to be caught, then the gazelle suddenly drops to the floor. They are paralyzed, they are limp. So that's the freeze element of the survival bit. What happens in their body is their body produces a significant amount of opioids to act as an analgesic so that when the lion eats the gazelle the gazelle won't feel a thing wow body is so clever honestly it's amazing i love it yeah so 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 that happens but mr lion or or mrs lion um thinks well i'm in luck here the gazelle's dead I'm going to try my luck and get a different gazelle. So they run off, get a different gazelle. In the meantime, gazelle number one that's on the floor who's been paralysed suddenly starts moving their limbs, you know, just a little bit gently. Then all of a sudden they do a big old shake and then they leg it away from the lion into safety. Now, there's been a lot of research on this and this shaking mechanism takes... The gazelle takes us, takes everyone out of the fight, flight, freeze response, okay, so that we're able to do this. Now, when we're in fight, flight, freeze, certain key things that our body needs to be all good and happy in life get switched off. So if we're running away from a tiger, fertility gets turned off. Now, for those of you in perimenopause, you still are fertile, okay? But that can get switched off because obviously you're running away from a tiger. You don't need that. It's not an essential part to survival. So estrogen decreases even further. Even though you're in peri, if you've, if you've got stress, it decreases it even further. Your testosterone decreases your progesterone decreases prolactin which is a hormone that we use or have when we're breastfeeding um, increases so our periods kind of get further and further apart okay so there's lots of different things happen our gut gets turned off so a lot of women in perimenopause dysregulated nervous system think that you know a lot of women suffer with ibs so irritable mm. bowel syndrome so they might be constipated really bad constipated or they might be the other way around they might have really bad diarrhea um your growth hormones your growth and repair gets switched off so i know my hair was really falling out big time i thought i was getting alopecia mm. um but then when i started doing these exercises my hair got thicker yeah so um all of those things that aren't vital to your survival get switched off with the increase in cortisol. And that's why we need to regulate the cortisol. Now I said earlier about estrogen as a nerve protector and when we go into peri and, in, and especially in menopause, it leaves us more at risk of inflammation, um, which can cause, or it can cause humming. You can get this humming, it can cause tinnitus, vertigo, Depending on which nerve is inflamed, we will experience different symptoms. And women experience all of this, sadly. Mm. In, and some women experience all of this in, um, in menopause. So um, the vagus nerve, which is key in the neurogenic tremors that I stimulate, uh, it's key to our survival and rest and digest system, that is also the prime regulator of, guess what? Inflammation. Mm -hmm. So it's our body's natural regulator of inflammation. So by doing these, we're kind of ticking loads of different boxes without having to take supplements. It's, fasc it's fascinating because um, in the work that I do with um, coaching, we, you know, we activate the parasympathetic nervous system all the time, you know, through meditation, through cold showers, breath you work. know, and breath work. It's just the one truncating set of nerves that goes everywhere in your body. And you're absolutely, and you're absolutely right. And I resonate with all of the things you said. I mean, I'm 50 now. I was starting my perimenopause journey at 36. Yeah. I'm, I'm literally still there. Yeah. Um, 
by hook or by crook, but there's no doubt about it. You know, your stress gets amplified when actually you're not only in this stressful situation, but no one's helping you with this stressful situation. And so you you just get on the, on that cyclical pattern. Um, and I definitely resonate with the whole extending periods because it makes sense, doesn't it? If you're scared, now's not the time to be having a baby. You know, that's what your body is basically telling you. So so can you describe to us? Um, what these exercises might be obviously you have a yoga background pilates background but um how is it different to anything else um that that women are currently doing well it's interesting isn't it i suppose the difference is in our in our 20s and in our 30s if you're into fitness you we've always exercised our muscles okay but in our 40s and 50s we need to exercise our nervous system so these are impulses they start in your hips Um, And it depends on how much kind of stress and trauma you've had as to how your physiology will be. So I'm going to change this laptop just a bit. So when we're in a stress situation, our physiology, we contract, okay? We we contract because all of our vital organs are on the front of our body. Mm. So what we do is we open you up so that we take you from contraction through to expansion. And these tremors start off on your hips. But over time, and it's a process, okay, so it's not a one hit wonder, it's a process. Over time, the tremors come up to your shoulders, you you can feel it there, in your neck, in your hands, and you're just moving. So you're lying down on the floor, but you can do it standing up. So a lot of my clients now... I just speak to them. And as soon as I speak to them, they laugh. And then I, oh my God, my body's tremoring just with your voice because they know it's tremor time and their body okay. gets excited. They're like, yeah. tremor, you know, and it's, yeah. it's amazing to see. Um, but it's your nervous system doing it. And, and so people who are new to it, they it's very common that they might laugh. They're like, oh my God, this is really weird. And, and so they'll be laughing. It's also common they might cry because crying yeah. is a release of emotion. Mm. And emotion stands for energy in motion and it's the nerve impulses that carry the energy in motion, yeah. hence the emotion. And that's why we need to sort your nervous system out in order to do it. Um, so I stretch the body and tire out the muscles um, before activating the naturally therapeutic neurogenic tremors which reset your hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis making you feel better and so is it it sounds wonderful i mean it's not something i've heard of and and i and so when you say is this something that so people initially would need to come to you for you to teach them the technique um, and then something they they use as a self-management themselves so it's an ongoing yeah, process yeah. it's self-regulatory yeah so it um, if you're coming to me it depends so if anyone has got and this ties in with the menopause symptoms so if you've had a stressful high octane life which many people on LinkedIn have because they've worked really hard in their careers um, then it might be that their, that their nervous system is more dysregulated and hence that they get worse menopause symptoms than someone who's led a, a, a very happy, stress-free life. Do you see mm, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So if you've got trauma in your background or if you've uh, suffered with burnout, um, you know, anything like that, then I would say, yes, come to me. I do. I teach one-on-one in person and on Zoom. I also do groups um on zoom as well because it's kind of like their shake time it's their they've set it in their diary i help people become so that it becomes habitual and embedded if that makes any sense yeah absolutely if you've had stress if you've had trauma then it's important that we know the right part of your nervous system's working so that you're not sympathetically activated and so that you're not in that freeze response because we want to take you into a ventral vagal activation response in that response that means that you're present you're happy etc so i work with my clients doing grounding exercises to embody them to bring them back to the body so that they get that sense of feeling and then by doing that over time they will notice quite big changes within their system so it's quite incredible and a total game changer so I've written this in the book essentially I'm taking um, therapies 
really effective therapies traditionally used in the trauma world into the menopause and peri fitness platform. Yeah, it's brilliant. And you know what? There are, we can't have too many of these things, uh, in my opinion, you know, because actually, I think this is one of the things that I often say to the women that I'm working with and, and you know, the companies that are interested in, in menopause in work is that actually a lot of what you're already carrying shows itself during perimenopause and menopause. It does. Because actually yeah. that's the window for it to really appear. And when it so, raises the ugly head, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, it, you know, it sounds, it sounds fantastic. So, so let's talk a little bit more then about um, in terms of um, – menopause I mean for for women at what point would they know I mean you've given us some symptoms you know at what point would someone know you know that actually maybe my HRT isn't working maybe maybe I still don't feel any different I don't feel any better I mean would it be worth them you know well, investigating more about the Foxy plan with H with HRT it's trial and error anyway isn't it mm. actually it, it depends on the dosage that you're given and the types and everything like that so you, you'd always say to try it anyway I just liken this to you should start it at perimenopause I, I think you know women in their late 30s and um, you know going into that transition then or anyone you could be in your 20s and if you're suffering with premenstrual tension then try these they will uh, you know, they help nine out of women. They really help nine out of women with premenstrual tension, which can be very, very unmanageable. So um, this is about, it's, it's about being kind to yourself. Like in any fitness plan that you've got, if you want to lose weight, it's gonna be difficult if you're in a stress response, because if you're in a stress response, your body's going, well, hang on a second, we need to store this fat because we've ran away from a tiger once. Therefore, if it happened once, it's going to happen again. OK, so losing weight off your belly um, is much more difficult to do. So any woman who's like, you know, in her 30s, who might be going to loads of hit classes, but's not losing the weight, then she needs to think, could this be something else? could this be my nervous system actually slightly dysregulated? Um, so going into like that, any woman who's suddenly waking up at three in the morning, I would say that's your telltale sign. Yeah. But anyone, any woman who's feeling angry or who's feeling depressed, usually people with PTSD, for example, initially if, if there was a traumatic event or, or if they had lots of stress through work, their cortisol levels will be really high initially, but then what goes up must come down. So people with PTSD typically have far lower cortisol levels than, than other people, yeah? Yeah. So all of these kind of things will kind of play into it. So I, to be fair, I mean, I say in the book, I just think that all women should do it. Um, if you want to live longer, <laughs> um, if you want to live longer and be happier and be fitter, then let's sort your survival response out and away you go. So with this, once your hormones are coming back because you're no longer stressed, your testosterone is going to go up. Now, testosterone is a big thing for women in um, perimenopause and menopause affects your sex drive, affects your ability to, well, you just, you feel more energized, but it affects your ability to grow muscle. And you know what, guess what? The more muscle you have, the higher your metabolic, your metabolic rate will be. So even if you are sleeping or lying on the sofa in the evening, um, because you've got more muscles, your body is still um, metabolizing calories, you know? Yeah. So, I, I would say this, anyone that's into their fitness should use it because I go into so many different things in the book about how it can actually help on different levels. And then touching on perimenopause as well and stress. Now, I've had clients come to me and their periods have stopped in completely and they've thought that they've been in menopause. I've taught them the tremoring 
and lo and behold, their periods have come back. So it turns out that they were just in a toxic relationship. Mm. Yeah. So they got rid of the relationship and yeah, now they are in Perry, but actually they still are, you know, kind of bleeding a bit and, and they've had an increase in, you know, estrogen and testosterone and progesterone. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, and it is so fascinating how you can um, evoke change in yourself. And I think, I think that's very empowering um, for women, very empowering for women. I was going to just mention two things. So um, I think DNA profiling can be incredibly helpful as well in this sort of thing. I had DNA profiling done. It basically told me never go near a HIIT workout because I carry all the wrong genes for that the minute I do a HIIT workout it it drives my cortisol up and therefore that was not helping me at all a brisk you need a tremor at the end of your HIIT workout yeah. right yeah. right yeah. exactly yeah. so it's that sort of thing but I found I was able to get rid of my excess weight over lockdown by walking um love walking love exact, it. exactly so we mustn't we mustn't underrate that but I was also going to say you mentioned PMDD um, I actually just interviewed somebody yesterday talking about mother and daughter talking about PMDD and it is um, it's a really emotional interview listening to mum talking about her her daughter and, and actually having to fight to get people to understand that at a cellular level someone can personality change like that based on a drop in estrogen when ovulating but fortunately they're all and really I can places. really help them that's the great thing you know someone with PMDD the stats are really quite um shocking because mm. you know up to 30 percent of women with PMDD will attempt suicide yeah and and this is what and this is what was on the episode there were the, the lady talked about three attempts and I mean, yeah. it was so shocking, but, and also PMDD is not just for teenagers, you know, people, no. it's no. for all women. And maybe we just didn't know that we were experiencing it. Um, but if you're, if you're in any doubt, it'd be great to watch that. But as we draw our interview to a close, I can't believe how quickly the time's gone. It's just so no, fascinating, funny. Allegra. So um, what's your hope for the future when you think about um, menopause, perimenopause for women? What do, you, what do you hope will happen in the future that will mean that women aren't suffering in the way that they have done previously? Um, I, uh, more research, more funding. Um, if women want to um, go on HRT for it to be free, um, you know, and, and for the stigma of HRT to be gone because ultimately it's uh, it helps women um to know that they actually they are in control of their body i want women to be happy and this really is going to empower them so that they can reclaim their you so that they feel like the amazing person they felt like when they were in their 20s um you know these are tiny little exercises but they make they're i mean they're a total game changer so, that's, yeah. that's fantastic well I think I think that's a fantastic list that we can we can put out there and as we already know even today as this interview is being um, recorded you know Nicola Sturgeon has talked about the impact of menopause for her today and and how difficult that is so menopause doesn't discriminate um it, no, it doesn't it doesn't and I say that all the times it doesn't matter who you are it's coming your way and yeah. it can be so much easier with all these wonderful things at our fingertips so Allegra Boxley thank you so much for your interview today how how can people get in touch with you get to know more about you so um i'm on instagram at allegra foxley um and you can go and visit my website so it's called the foxley plan t-h-e-f-o-x-l-i-e plan.com so mm. or facebook i've got the foxley plan web page feel free to give me a nudge um and yeah i look forward to meeting you all yeah, that's lovely. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Really, really Pleasure. appreciate thank it. You very much. I've really, really learned a lot. So, yes, if you are interested, get in touch with Allegra. But for now, thank you very much. And we'll look forward to meeting you again. Thank you, Allegra. Thank you. Bye.